Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a staging site for your WordPress website. Now, you got a lot of different options here as far as plugins are concerned. You got BlogVault, uh, WP Stagecoach, WP Staging, and those all do exactly what they're supposed to do. Like they create a staging site for your website as a way where you can make changes without interfering with your production website. And that's great. But the thing is those all, as far as I know, come with a cost, some type of cost, either a one-time fee or an annual fee that you'll have to pay in order to use that functionality. Um, if you want to go that route, that is the simplest route, the easiest route. Uh, but if you want something that is free and that you have complete control over, then that is what this video is all about. I'm going to show you how to manually create a WordPress staging site for your WordPress website so that you can make those changes in an environment where it doesn't interfere with your production website. So, and I'll be, I'll be upfront here, um, regardless of if you use a plugin or if you use the method that I'm going to teach you in this video, the changes that you make on your staging site will have to be applied again on the production site. There's no easy way to apply the changes once you made them on the staging site directly to the production site. You're basically gonna have to figure out what you wanna change in the staging site and then make those changes again on the production site. So with that caveat, let's go ahead and take a look at the tutorial here. And we are going to be using um, my WordPress website here at tonyflorida.me to create a staging website. So I have um, my hosting with DreamHost. And again, this is, this is specific this tutorial is specific for DreamHost, but if you understand the general concepts, the high level concepts of what we're gonna do, which is pretty much um, creating a subdomain and then copying, making a copy of our website and then uploading that copy to the subdomain. If you understand those three concepts, then you should be able to do this with any other hosting provider. So um, I'll try to do my best to point out what those high level concepts are throughout the tutorial but um, some of the individual steps that we go through might be different for you if you don't have DreamHost. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the tutorial here. What we first wanna do is to create a staging subdomain, like I said. So um, in DreamHost, that's going to be going into our domain section and click on manage domains, and then we can create a subdomain for our, um, for our domain name. So we're gonna click on add hosting to a domain subdomain, and in here, I'm gonna type in something like staging.tonyflorida.me. Okay, and uh, I won't add the www. We're gonna use um, my existing username for that. And this is going to live at uh, physically on the server at home, username, and then staging.tonyflorida.me. So let's fully host that domain. And uh, while this is working in the background, it might take a couple minutes for the DNS settings to propagate. Um, but while this is working, we can go over to our WordPress website and like I said, take a snapshot of this, uh, this website as it exists right now, make a copy of it, and then we're gonna upload that to the staging site. So inside the WordPress admin dashboard, we can do this all with a plugin called Duplicator. I have a couple other oh yeah I have a couple other videos on this channel about Duplicator, uh, but I'll go through the process again with you. You want to click on Add New here in your plugin section, and then we'll search for Duplicator. And the first result here should be yep from Snap Creek. That's the one that you want. So we'll click on Install Now, and then activate when it's finished installing. So click on Activate. And then that'll be now in your plugins list. We can come over here to manage. And what we want to do is create a new package. That's the terminology that they use here. They call uh, this, this archive that we're going to make a package. So default name's fine. All the default options are fine. Click on next. And now what it's doing is it's in the background scanning our website, our database, all of our images, our files, our blog posts, our pages, everything, and putting it into an archive. So that's all done. Everything looks good. Let's click on yes, continue with the build process and hit build. Now this will take some time uh, to build a package, not too long, but if you have a big website, it might take a few minutes, but this shouldn't take more than uh, a minute or so. But while that's doing its thing, let's check to see the status of our staging site. So I'm just gonna open this up in a new tab 
and um, that's good. This is although the site's not found because there's nothing there yet. Um, we know that the DNS propagation has finished, so that's all ready for us when we're ready to go back over here. Um, we're still building the package, uh, so if this takes more than just a couple seconds longer, we will pause the video and catch back up with you, just so you don't have to sit here and watch this. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll see you in a couple seconds. All right, guys, we're back about 20, 25 seconds later and our build has finished. As you can see here, there are two files that we have to download and then re-upload to our staging site. The first one is the installer file, which I'll download here, and then the archive file, which is just the, uh, a zip file, basically. So with those two files, let's go back into our hosting provider. And now uh, associated with our subdomain, we can access, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either do this with FTP or a secure copy or putty secure copy. We're gonna use the built-in FTP uh, web interface here. So what we're gonna do is take those two files and basically upload them to the staging site. So we'll do the small one first, the installer.php file, that shouldn't take too long. And then when that's finished, you'll see that's now on the uh, the hosting um, of the staging site. And then we can do the same thing with the zip file. We just want to upload it. We don't want to um, unzip it. So click on uh, just upload. And this will take, you know, a minute or two maybe. So I'll pause the video again here and catch up with you when it finishes. Okay guys, I'm back. The installer zip file archive file has finished uploading. And now you'll see that we have those two files under the hosting for staging.tonyfluida.me. So because we have this PHP file installer.php uh, at the root of our staging file, we can access that directly. Um, so we can go over here to our staging.tonyfluida.me tab and just tack on slash installer.php. And that will go ahead and start up the installation process. There's four steps to this. So the first step is just make sure everything looks good. Click on I have read and accept all terms and notices. Hit next. And that's gonna extract that archive file that we uploaded. Um, and that'll take you know a few seconds to do. And we can actually see that happening in real time. If we refresh this, whoops, we got knocked off. So uh, forget that, well, I guess we can come back in and see the status of the files here. Um, but that's basically extracting everything. Um, as you can see, it looks a lot different than what it did when we first uploaded those couple files. So um, let's wait for this extraction to happen. I'll pause the video a third time and catch up with you when it finishes. Okay, the extraction has completed. Let's go to step two of this process. And this is where we're going to have to set up a database for our new WordPress website. So um, again, this depending on if you're using DreamHost or not, this step will be slightly different, but just in general, you have to set up a, a, a database for your WordPress website. So for DreamHost, let's go back over here. And um, on the left-hand side, if you expand more, you can go to MySQL databases. And what we're gonna do is just create a database. So we'll make a database named, um, we'll call it staging uh, underscore Tony Florida. And then we're gonna put it under the host name, mysql.tonyflorida.me. And then the user can be tonyflorida.me. Um, and then actually let's make a new user cause I'm not sure what the password is for that. So we'll create a new user. We'll just call it T F L O R I D A me staging staging. That's fine. And then the password, uh, I'll just do, uh, I'll suggest a strong password, um, and copy that onto my clipboard. So let's create that database and uh, that's going to take, you know, a couple seconds to create. Um, and now we can go ahead and use this information to input it into the installer. So let me, I think the best way to do this is to just, uh, kind of, make this half screen and then make this half screen so we can just go back and forth and copy and paste. So the first thing, because I do have the password on the clipboard, I'll paste that in here. Um, we want the host to be the host name. So for me, that's mysql.tonyflorida.me. The database name is staging Tony Florida. And then the username is Tony T Florida me staging. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's test that connection and make sure we're all hooked up properly and we are good to go. We got a pass and a good here. 
So let's continue with the installation here. Uh, this is just saying that everything in the database is going to be overwritten. That's okay because it's a fresh database install. Click on okay. And um, let's just make this full screen, get out of here. And now step three, um, pick the information for your WordPress website. We're just gonna call it Tony Florida staging. And it's gonna be existing at this URL. Um, and on this physical location on the server. So that looks good, click next, and then we're good to go. So we can go ahead and log into the admin site with this button here. And uh, let me see if this credentials, these credentials work, and it does. These are the same credentials for your old, uh, your production WordPress website. So use the same credentials for staging as it is for production. Um, and now we are logged into staging.tonyflorida.me. So we can look at this website. Whoops, it's not quite ready to go yet. Or maybe it was just a cache copy. It is ready to go. So um, staging.tonyflorida.me, we have that. We're done with duplicator, so we can get into that. And then we also have tonyflorida.me, the production website. So what I can do now is in the staging website, go into the WordPress admin dashboard and make changes and these changes will not affect the production website. So let's let's do something extreme like we'll change the theme. We'll change the theme from the current theme to 2017. So we'll activate that. Um, let's just see what that does, did to our website. So this is vastly different than what we're seeing uh, on staging. So we see this big picture header and then and then our, our static content here um, and that's not affecting our production website at all. So if I'm satisfied with these changes on the, whatever I do, if I change the theme or add new plugins or even do updates, um, if when I'm satisfied with those changes, I can reapply those changes manually on the production website. And like I said, there is no good way to, you know, automatically pull or push those changes to the production website. It's just something that you have to, you know, use it as a sandbox to play around with whatever changes you're going to make and then uh, redo those changes on your production site. So guys, that's about it. The high level concepts of how to create a staging website for WordPress. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. Check out some of my other WordPress videos here. Uh, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.